it's, you know, this is an unprecedented time and we need to learn faster about this disease. And so for us, a contribution we can make is at Ancestry with the largest consumer genomic network in the world with 16 million members, we can activate that network to gain a massive data set that can enable researchers to identify and validate just the kind of connections that you're talking about. So in just a few weeks, we've had half a million, 500,000 members already participating in the survey. It's a live survey. So people come in and they participate whether they've had symptoms or not. And that can help us identify insights into COVID-19 and why some people have severe reactions and why others do not. So, so uh, you have all that data already, but they have to opt in to be a part of this? Correct. People sign up for our network, and over 70% of our members sign up to participate in research studies. But in each one of those cases, we reach out to them and we tell them what the research is about, and they opt in to participate. So in this case, with just a couple of contacts, over half a million people, everybody wants to help each other right now. And so people are activating as a community and everyone's trying to collaborate. We're also working to share our research for free with any accredited medical research organization working on the fight, because this is a time where we all need to collaborate and share information so that we can make faster progress on this important disease. Margo, are there any other diseases you've studied where you found a link between genetics and severity of the disease? So at Ancestry, this is the first major GWAS study, genetic-wide association study that we are directly pursuing. The core business of Ancestry is family history. We're a billion-dollar subscription company with 3.5 million subscribers. DNA has been an important part of enabling tens of millions of people to get started more rapidly on that family history journey. And it's just now, with all the things going on with COVID, that this interest in digitization of healthcare and how do we help people understand their more personalized preventative risks, whether it's COVID or other things in our lives. And we're happy to also be at the forefront of this new arena for healthcare as well. well Margo, when it comes to, to COVID, uh, some people clearly, as we all know, have been more susceptible uh, to the disease taking hold than, than others. Uh, are, are the factors, though, uh, not linked more to your health, your diet, your age, than, than necessarily your genetics? So there's definitely strong, as they call them, comorbidities with other things such as diabetes, heart disease, et cetera. Those are obviously very strong factors, but there's also a rising body of evidence. We have the Dean of Stanford Medical School, Lloyd Miner, and our board. There's been a lot of research done that's also identified important genetic links between the people who are otherwise healthy, who then have these adverse reactions. And what we really need to do is identify that. Because just imagine a world if where when we were in China or Italy, we could have understood those genetic profiles that are most at risk. And that would have helped us support our communities and mitigate the impact of this important disease very quickly. And so we need to be part of taking the resources we have to make a difference for the advancement of, of science. There, there's a tragic case of, in New Jersey, just really in the onset of this crisis, where seven members of the same family tested positive. Four of the people in the same family died, and three more of them had to be hospitalized. Are, are those the types of clues that you're looking into, where, you, where you're making the, this sort of calculated bet that this is going to yield some results? So it's, it's definitely possible that we could discover what is causing some of those linkages. As with any scientific journey, right? we will find more dead ends than we find uh, fountains. But at the scale that we're now able to look and understand information, many research studies are often done only on 1,000 people. That's a large sample. So the fact that we have a half a million people in real time in the moment that this disease, and people can go in, back in into the study and update if they have a second occurrence or if other things happen. And so we're going to have the largest data set that's really ever been captured that will enable us to study and more rapidly understand this. And it's really hard to know at this time exactly what we're going to find. But the early research indicates that we should be able to find some important linkages. Margot, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.